Okay, so I'm going to start a new playlist, and this is a channel on, or a playlist on how to make money online uh, passively, which would include kind of uh, work from home or something you can do remotely, uh, digital nomad, side business, hustle, early retirement plan. And uh, right now I'm going to focus on YouTube because that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, and I have several small businesses to chat about, but this is going to be a video on YouTube, uh, the new features and a little bit of a walkthrough uh, through the new kind of YouTube features, but also a very, very important key strategies kind of in each section I'm going to go to and how to really get your subscribers and your watch hours without a bunch of nonsense. Uh, the real way to get real subscribers, real watch hours and uh, the real best ways to get traffic from outside of YouTube also. So I guess, uh, well, this is Brian Lewis from MMT Investing and things just changed. And I'm on lockdown in South Africa. And this is my, my buddy, Rhino Ralph. We're gonna show you around YouTube. And so I guess first off, the couple of things that stopped me from starting a YouTube channel that I was, planning on starting about a year and a half ago was the recording and the editing. So I wanted to get a really good camera or a good phone to record with. And I also was practicing and starting to record and I was bringing up this big editing software and the editing takes so much time. You gotta find a way to limit your editing so you can get content up. You got to be able to get content up. Um, if you're spending your time editing, you're you're just going to get bogged down and you're not going to keep at it. Um, so that's a big tip on getting started is just get started. And I mean, right now I, I broke my phone when I was traveling in Asia and I basically just got the cheapest phone that had a widescreen uh, dimension camera just for recording on my phone. So you can do kind of screencasts like this, or you can do pretty simple videos on your phone. You don't need a lot of equipment just to get started. Like one of the little tripods that holds your phone still. Um, that's a pretty cheap and easy one. Um, or for me, like I have a stock, this channel is a bunch of stock market videos. And so there's a platform called TradingView where I can do stock market videos and I can publish them on TradingView and also post them on YouTube. Um, so, just number one, figure out the type of videos that you're making and figure out how to get those things up without a lot of editing. Um, the uh, Google uh, Google Photos, if you upload your videos to Google Photos, Google Photos has kind of video editing software in there and they have AI video editing. And there's some cool stuff that you can do actually in Google Photos. And there's some other AI kind of uh, video software, but just in Google Photos, like you can like uh, cut out silences and do automatic kind of jump cut editing and you can add music um, just for a very simple kind of editing software that's not going to take a lot of your time. You just have to upload it to YouTube and or not to YouTube, I'm sorry, to Google Photos and then just tell it to kind of auto edit it and then just take a look and post it if, you, you know, if you want to do editing. But I mean, for the most part, I just don't edit my videos. Like I might take uh, one or two shots at getting it done and then I just post it and just go on to the next one because it's just more important to get the stuff up. Um, so now they moved the, the upload button here. So to upload videos, you just go here and upload. Um, so it's pretty simple. I'll go through the dashboard. I'll talk about some really good strategies here. And so I guess the comments, like you can go to your comments section and it'll pull all of your comments up. And this is a cool way you can just respond to whoever, like this guy's talking about the market crashing. So this is kind of funny stuff. Like you want you want to get comments going and you can kind of just do that from here. Or like this guy is uh, asking about a stock for me to look up. So I can go like, cool, uh, cool, I'll look it up. Look it up and do a video. So I'll go do a video on that probably tomorrow. And uh, 
But what I wanted to, let's see, does it see if you go to this comment view, it does not have the pin. So, so it's okay to comment from that view, but let's just jump into a video here. Like, uh, go to comments on Tesla, like this specific video, right? And here's some, all right, let's go, let's go to the Nordic tankers. That one has more comments, I think. Um, yeah, so you go to the comments here. And once you're in the video, you can see here the details in the comments. Let's look at the comments first. They're very important. And this is just a bot, <laughs> a bot video. Oh, and this is comments that I have not responded to yet. Um, so you take that off and now you can see all your comments for this video. And we'll talk about the buttons because there's a lot of strategies for when to click which buttons and how to respond. Like in general, you want to respond to all the videos and you want to get people talking. Like you just want as much action in the comments as possible. So you can post your own comment to get people going. You can respond to their comments in a way that will get them talking. Like if you get trolls that say some negative messed up stuff, like that's not bad. Like that's controversial. And you can say something controversial, you know, right back to them and then it'll get them talking and other people will jump in. Or people post like a rude joke or something like don't hide that or delete it like let people comment on that stuff like you want as many comments as possible so just let the comments go and the like button like you can pretty much click like on everything that you're going to comment on and it's just positive feedback um so that's good i mean you just click like 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 whatever most of the time but there's two really important strategies for kind of organizing the comments and if you click on the action menu on a comment here, uh, here, let me do that first. So like this comment here, this guy's making like a, an analysis comment that's pretty interesting here. He's talking about Nordic American tankers, oil tanker company. And he's saying that 5% of shareholders are profitable at this price. And that means, you know, people should be selling the stock soon and it might be a good spot to be dollar cost averaging whatever it's a it's a really interesting comment about this tanker company and it's like some information that i didn't cover in this video so it's a really cool thing like i really like this comment and i want people to comment on this thing and look at it right so you go to the action menu and you pin it and when you pin that will take that comment to the top of your comment section so everybody sees it and hopefully you can get people commenting on it so like if you see interesting comments you can pin them or if you see a topic where a bunch of people are commenting sometimes those get buried way down in the comments um, you get a comment that has like 30 replies on it and it's just way down if you pin that thing up to the top you'll get 100 replies instead of 30. so if they're popular pin them if it's a really good response that's you know that people will like to talk about pin it so that's how you get stuff up and then you generally just want likes and a lot of likes and comments. So you reply to everything, get people talking, um, but you pin it to get it up. And then this heart button is not the same thing as a like button. Like the like button, anybody can hit it. You don't know who hit like. And so it's good to just get some likes in there when you're replying to things. But the heart button sends them a direct notification that this channel liked their comment. And so that is a direct, that's a like from your channel, different than just a regular like. And the heart button is really good. And there's a little bit of strategy to it. So like you start commenting on things, right? And you try to get it going and say some people are responding to it. And then like maybe one or two days later, there's no more comments, right? Then you can come back in a little bit later and you can hit the like on it. And you can start liking people, or I'm sorry, hitting the heart button on people's comments a little bit later. You come in a day or two later and hit the heart. And then people get notified that you just like really appreciated their comment. And they'll go back to that conversation and then they could start chatting more on it. So that's a that's a trick with the heart button and how that works. Uh, that's really good. And then the dislike button. Uh, people don't know how to use this or even what it does. And this does not do the opposite of the like button at all. Like the like button is positive feedback on this comment. And the dislike button is does not 
as far as the YouTube algorithm goes, I watched uh, some algorithm videos of guys reading through the code and figuring out what the the dislike button actually does. And it doesn't do any kind of direct action on this person or this comment. The only action it has is on this comment section. So like this thread here, um, and this is a good thread that I want up top, I just pinned it. So I'm not gonna be hitting dislike on this thing. But if we scroll down here, and find some garbage comments like, um, okay, here, like for instance here. So like, this is a nice comment here. Like, thanks, it's nice. Like, okay, thanks, so you send them a heart. That's good, but this is not a comment that people are gonna be replying to, it just says thank you. Um, so you can actually thumb it down and give it a heart. So that's like a thank you from the channel and then who knows who thumbed it down, but thumbing it down makes it, go farther down in your comments. It's like the opposite of pinning it. So you can pin it up or you can thumb it down to push it farther down in the comments. So uh, so this is similar here. I mean, it, like I like this comment and I don't wanna be like rude to the guy that says thank you, but this kind of comment doesn't get replies. It just says thank you. And that's not a conversational topic. So you can thumb those down to get them. Here's another thank you, thumb it down. And then like the bots, um, oh, there's the topic I responded to a minute ago. Um, so like, for instance, like I said, I'll go look this video up. So like if I do a video on this tomorrow, um, I might leave another comment and then I can send them a heart and kind of get more action on it. Uh, and this here is a bot. And you don't want to like block the bots because they give you views and they give you comments. And there's a rude comment that I'll scroll out of the screen. But um, but if you get bad comments and just kind of a bad thread, like this is not something that anyone res respond to and it's just a bot. So that's something that you just thumb down. And so you can just kind of shuffle the uninteresting comments down. and like the interesting ones, I mean, like this is probably wouldn't pin this. It's not really related related to this video, so just like it. Um, but this guy's responding to the video and he's asking for another one. So that's not one I would pin. Um, I was asking people in this video if they like longer, longer format videos and a lot of people say they do, so that's good to know. Um, so you look at the analytics and you talk to people and see what they want. It's really important to ask people what they want and give that to them. So I was talking about the keywords, um, but this, you know, um, you can just talk to people about your YouTube channel and your strategy. Like, I mean, this video is actually about YouTube strategy, but the, the Nordic American Tanker video has nothing to do with YouTube strategy. But just at the end, I just kind of, you know, said, you know, whatever, hit the like button or subscribe or whatever. And I was like, you know, I'm trying a longer video. I don't know if people like these video lengths, just trying to figure out what kind of videos people like. And uh, people come on and they tell you, they tell you what they want and that's great. So then you know what to do. Um, give them exactly what they ask for and then go check out the analytics later. So that's, that's kind of the idea with commenting on your own comments. And that's all great and good, uh, but that doesn't get people to your channel. But there is one, one really big trick to with YouTube comments that will get people to your channel. And like, yeah, you can go around to a bunch of other channels and kind of comment on random things. But um, first of all, you want to have a YouTube name that looks like an official brand name so that people when they click on it, they know kind of they're going to like a company YouTube page. They'll expect you to have a YouTube channel if you have if you have like a brand name thing. So like mine is MMT Investing. And so people that click on that know that's like an investing kind of brand and they'll be expecting there to be a investment YouTube channel there. So you want your channel to be named something obvious where they know what you are. Um, and then you can go around commenting on stuff and maybe people will come look at your channel. Um, and you can maybe say like when you're commenting like, oh yeah, this thing is cool. What about this? And maybe I'll make a video on that on my channel. Like you mentioned your channel and then maybe we'll click through. Um, 
But there's a one other way to do it that's way more effective that I just started doing. I've been doing random comments here and there and getting a little bit of traffic, but I just started doing this. And um, this is one of the things that, that really, really works well is you go find the biggest channels in your genre. So for me, stock market and investing stuff. And I mean, mine's kind of alternative investments, like a little bit of Austrian economics and stuff. So there's some channels like George Gammon that's really popular in that genre for macro. Or uh, there's a channel called like Game of Trades, which is completely unrelated to George Gammon. Like they would never relate each other, but um, that's like a technical analysis channel that also does macro kind of cycle talk stuff. And that's a really cool one that I like. And those are channels that I like that are really related to my channel. Um, so I can go to their channel. You subscribe to their channel. They have a lot of views and a lot of followers that they've had for, well, I mean, George Gammon channel is pretty new actually, but, um, but what you do is you subscribe to those channels, you hit the notification bell, and then as soon as they post a video, like you go to be the first person commenting on their video, and then you want to start some kind of important like discussion. Like you're not just going to say like, oh, hey, you're cool. Like, I mean, that's good to say like something positive, but you want to start a discussion on their video and kind of just from the title of the video almost. Because if you watch the whole video, there's already gonna be like 50 comments. Like you get over there and you post some kind of discussion thing immediately and get up top, right? And then if you start getting comments and likes, yours is gonna be at the top. Maybe they'll even pin it at the top. And inside of that comment where you started the discussion, then you mention like, you know, oh yeah, this is a really cool thing that I wanna talk about on my channel. And then people see your name and they see you mentioning your channel and they see you starting a discussion. And that's not spammy. Like the other YouTube creator will really like that comment because it's it's like up top and it's getting comments. It's helping their channel. They're going to like you. They're going to say awesome. You know, you could maybe even make friends with their channel and get interviews and stuff like that. Um, but if you can get a good thread going on a popular video that's related to your channel, and they see that your name is related to that topic. Um, that's how you get click throughs from channels that are already really popular. And that's one of the best tricks to get people to your channel and get views just to your channel. So, so that just gets people to your channel and that doesn't get them to a specific video or anything like that. So you gotta go to your, uh, to your channel setup and uh, I forget where the settings are to set up your, uh, like your intro videos and things like that. I think you have to pop out, let's see, let's go find it. Cause yeah, you go to like settings, channel, like customize my channel here. It pops out to a completely different browser window. It's not easy to find, right? Okay, boom, so here, like this is the channel page where you can upload your splash screen, you can upload an intro video, which I need to do better intro videos to actually introduce the channel. I just threw like one random video up there, um, you know, and then you get your branding in here. This is my uh, logo that I made and I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, the logo is very important and it's a very specific strategy and, um, you know, whatever. I mean, it's got like the little professional picture of me in a suit for an investment channel and it has some cartoony stuff and it has, you know, kind of a recognizable logo. That's all good branding stuff. And, uh, you know, and stock chart stuff back here so they can kind of see it's stock charts and, uh, you know, basic branding, things like that. Um, but I think I was already mentioning there's two types of videos. Like there's videos where you target keywords and there's videos where you are creating a playlist. And, the the playlist videos is really what YouTube wants you to make, which is um, I just started making a bunch of random playlists. I didn't even know what I was doing here. And there's one, this one, the monetary education for investors. Ah, I have 48 videos in there. Wow. Um, man, I've been pumping out videos. Now this is in less than a month. I've, it's 
my goodness. I think I have almost 200 videos in like a month. Um, so I've been focusing a whole, whole lot on creating content. And I haven't focused enough on traffic strategies. And that's what I'm going to talk about uh, now. So this is, so if you're bringing people in from another channel, you want to have really good playlists. And a playlist is something that people are going to want to click into and they're going to watch like the entire playlist. Like that's 48 videos. And what people have been doing is finding my keyword videos or coming over from comments. And then if they find this playlist, people that are interested start watching all the videos in this playlist. They'll watch the whole video and they'll start commenting on the videos. And my watch hours have been doing better than my subscriber count. Um, and it's just because of this playlist. And I made a bunch of playlists and most of them aren't getting any interest. And this one playlist people really like. And it's an education type of playlist. So like playlist type of things that, you know, YouTube recommends that you do is like a how to kind of playlist, which is, you know, teaching people how to do stuff like that's going to be information that's useful for the next whatever, 20 years, like how to change a tire or cook a omelet or something like if somebody searches for that, like your videos will be useful if you have a cooking channel or something. Um, so that's a really good type of playlist or like a general education channel where people are just learning and watching a bunch of videos and they're all related or like an entertainment type of channel where it's all on the same type of thing like surfing or something like that. Or I mean, if you're capable of making like a TV show, like an actual show that people would watch, like then good on you. That's really cool. But um that's the idea with a playlist is you put a bunch of related videos in one playlist, you put them in order, and then people that find it can watch all of them. And that's why YouTube is trying to focus on watch hours more than subscribers and likes and things like that. Um, and when you get people just randomly to your channel splash page, you need to have your playlist set up and Oh, different channels. Let's go back home. So the playlists are important. And so like these kind of keyword stock videos, I have them in a playlist, but it doesn't even really make sense to have those in a playlist because nobody's going to go and arbitrarily watch videos on a hundred something random stocks that they're, you know, those are things they'll find in the search. So those don't need to be in a playlist, but uh, you should really focus the channel on, and this is not investment advice, um, but uh, you should focus the channel on playlist type of videos. That's what YouTube wants. That's what they're prioritizing all of their, you know, their bots and their metrics for. And I was going to say down here. So there's this add a section button and a section is not like a playlist. It's just kind of a thing that shows up on your splash page. So you automatically get like your trailer and your general uploads, like your uploads is your default playlist. So all of your keyword videos will automatically go into your upload playlist and people can play those all if they want to, but who would do that? I mean, that's going to be all of your, everything on your whole channel. Um, so you get, you know, the uploads and the popular stuff. Um, but then you can click that section button and you can add a playlist to your splash page. And this is what's important is I want people to see this one and actually probably should pop that up to the top. Like that's what I want people to click on because that's where I'm getting all of my watch hours as if they get into the monetary education for investors. Then they start watching all the videos on these economists that they don't know about talking about, you know, Jeff Snyder and whatever, like Austrian economists like Mises is here. And, um, modern monetary theory stuff, um, like Warren Mosler, like these are economists that people aren't necessarily searching for. They wouldn't know the keyword names to even search for these people. Um, but once they get into this playlist, they're like, oh, wow, who's this? And then what's this topic talking about, you know, money printing and whatever. So this is education on modern economics. And it's a, it's a cool playlist that people actually watch uh, when they find it but you got to get people to find it. So 
you go down here, you hit section, you pop your good playlist up to the top, boom, now people can find it when they hit your channel and that'll help a lot with your watch hours. And that's the general strategy for getting watch hours is you set up good playlists and you get them to the top. And uh, let's go into a video here. Uh, oh, right, I'm on a different tab, right? Okay, so let me get out of this one. I'm gonna go to a video that doesn't uh, hasn't been edited. Let me talk about let me talk about keywords versus playlists and how to get people from one video to the next one. So let's go to the TVIX. So this is just like a volatility index. The Schvix, it's kind of a fun one. Um, so here's your keywords. Um, this is really bad for keywords, actually. Let's fix them right now. So in my analytics, right, I have found out that the top thing that people hit my channel looking for is something stock. It's like Amazon stock or, you know, Google stock or tanker, oil tanker stock, like Nordic American tanker stock. Um, so here's a video I did a bad job naming a couple weeks ago, right? So what people are searching for here is TVIX. That needs to be first as a keyword. This is a keyword video. It's not a playlist video. And I'm trying to convert people. I'm trying to grab people out of Google search. So you got to put exactly what they're searching for right at the beginning of your title, which is TVIX stock. And TVIX isn't actually a stock. It's an ETN. So I'll put like ETF, ETN. Like they might search for those, but most people are going to search for TVIX stock. So I want that first. And then I like to put colons. They don't like you to put a lot of um, like weird characters, brackets. They're limiting people putting weird characters. But a colon is a good way to separate it up. And you can put like a couple keywords and a colon. And then you can put like a little message to grab people's attention. Um, so like Schvix as like a nonsense word for this thing. That's kind of fun. That might get people to click on it. They're like, what's that? Or like 2x volatility sounds cool. So you know, maybe they'll click on it, and it's like on a most popular list. Um, probably take this out of there. That's not good for your title. You want it short, and you want it to hit your keywords, and then maybe say something interesting that'll grab attention. But really, the thumbnail and the title need to relate, and they need to relate to your video, and they need to hit your keywords. Because um, if Google sees people clicking into your video and leaving soon, then they're like, oh, your titles and stuff aren't good. They're not related to your content or you're not you're not delivering what you said you were gonna deliver. They wanna see people staying on your video at least halfway or whatever, at least five minutes, I guess. On really long videos, people start dropping off at like five minutes. Um, but so yeah, let me talk about like keyword strategy here and then I'll go look at how you can get people to the next video and get your playlist once they've come into like a, a keyword video. So this is, you know, top 10 stocks. That sounds like a cool thing to click on and levered volatility and Schvix. It has like these weird keywords and you can kind of see a stock chart back here, but you can't really see what's going on. Um, and you get, you know, the face expression. It's like a weird expression that people might want to look at. Um, and you get some like branding and kind of stuff in there. So that that's like some ideas for the thumbnails is to get interesting things that people want to click on, but it needs to be on topic. It needs to be your keywords and your keywords and your keywords here. And like, I don't even want to put words before. It's just like TVIX stock, right? TVIX stock it, it is not a stock. It's an ETF or whatever, you know, and then you can... You just put your keywords first. It's an ETF, ETN, or whatever. It's an ETN. Um, blah, 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 blah. And um, this is where you upload your thumbnail. And down here, these keywords are bad. So let's fix these things. This is cool. I get to show you how to like actually fix a keyword video. I mean, I want TVIX stock, right? So let's do like TVIX stock, ETN, uh, ETF, and volatility. And then 
those are the keywords. And like if this was Amazon stock, I would just put like Amazon stock as one keyword, the whole thing, you know, because that's exactly what people would be searching for. The TVIX, they might put stock, they might put ETN. So I don't want to connect TVIX and stock right here in the keywords. Um, but that's how you do title, thumbnail, description, keywords, all targeted at a specific keyword that you know people are searching for. So as you make videos, you can go in your analytics and you can see what keywords people are hitting your videos on. So on my channel, it's something stock. They hit something stock. So like I really want to, on these keyword videos, I want to do something stock and just talk about it and do the video and the description, everything. Like just hit the keyword and you can go into the analytics and check it out. I'm not going to do that right now. But so there we fix the description. Um, that should be a better keyword hit. This video is a little bit older and it did mediocre with a mediocre kind of keyword thing. It had the keywords in there, but Google really weights the words at the beginning of your description way more than the words at the end. And it goes to 100, but they don't want 100. Like 50 is good, like half of that. And they do like a lot of text in the description. Like if you can write two or three big paragraphs, that's great. It's a little time consuming. I just try to punch it up really fast and kind of get all the keywords and get some interesting stuff in there real fast. Like that takes a little bit of time. Um, and tags should be easy. Like you just smash the keywords. Um, but what I wanted to show more than that is the end screen. And so this one doesn't have an end screen yet. And there's some different options here. You can do uh, latest video, one video and one subscribe, a couple of videos, a video, a playlist, and a subscribe. Now that is cool. So boom, video, playlist, and subscribe. And it automatically is saying, we'll just find the best video that we think this viewer wants. Great. And you get your logo there as a subscribe button that pops up. And now you can pick a playlist. So playlist. And mm, the only playlist that people actually watch, this one, boom. And now you can directly get people to the playlist from a keyword video. And so you can get them to another keyword video, get them to the playlist. Like maybe you don't even want another uh, random video. Maybe you just want a playlist and a subscribe or, you know, whatever the strategy is. I'm going to do all three here. Boom. So now we can get people to that playlist and get watch hours. So that's a big trick for watch hours is those in screens. And then with cards, uh, cards is very similar to the in screens. But, uh, but you can do more specific stuff and put them in different parts of the channel, like polls and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not going to get into that. That's a little bit more complicated. How do I get out of here? No. Okay. So... Let's go look at, let's go back here to the channel. And I'm gonna talk about the, the channel setup, which most of most of it's basic, but there's a couple of features that changed and there's, there's a really huge one that, um, that is just critical that I just started working on this week and it's making a huge, huge difference in the number of subscribers. So we've talked about kind of how to get people over to the channel and and get people to playlists and get watch hours a little bit. Um, so I have more tricks for getting people to the channel that I want to talk about. But this is how to get people to subscribe. And this is massive. So, I mean, when you're doing your setup, uh, we already went out to the, like, the main channel screen and looked at that. And you want to come through here. And you want to click on every tab and just fill it out. There's a bunch of obvious stuff here, you know keywords and like the default text for and default tags. Um, I had stuff in here and it's really annoying actually to go back and change this stuff later. I have like a pile of tags that are bad for most of the videos that I had. Um, most of my videos are something stock. So I just put that word in here for now, but a, a, def a video default I don't think is very useful except in the description. 
if you have a bunch of stuff in your description where you have like a link to, um, you know, if somebody, if, if you link to like Shopify or something and it's like a sponsored link that you want in every video or just something that you have in every, every video in the description, this is very useful. But I mean, your title should be targeted to that video. You really don't need anything in the title. Uh, you're always going to make a new title. And, you know, the description could have some links or something that you have in every video. You just put it in here as good tags. You really don't want tags. Let's get rid of that. Um, because you need to get your title and your tags good for each video. And yeah, it's like education channel. This is not investment advice. So you click that and you click your language that helps them target. It's important because the normal language is like default. Like go pick your language in your region and it'll help target. Uh, I get way more hits in America and pick like United States English and uh, permissions community. You can do that later, add users and stuff. Uh, but the big thing here is you go to branding, channel, branding, and there's a big debate on this. So they took off the, the thing where you can add like an intro clip to your video. So if you want a little intro clip with your logo or whatever, some intro music, like you have to go do that outside of YouTube, like in your own vid video editing software. Um, YouTube removed that stuff because people were just leaving the videos. People had long intros that they thought were really cool and people were just leaving because they weren't getting to the content. Um, so if you do go make an intro, like three seconds or something is a good amount of time, like super short, like bam, just splash your brand and get to it. You know, maybe, a I don't know, music for three seconds, whatever, but like just throw your thing up there and get to it. And like for me, that's extra editing time. I don't have a process set up to add like a little branding intro yet. I might do that this week, um, but it's just going to be really short and just throw the brand up and just get on with it. Uh, for the branding but this is way more important for branding than that like you know you get like your logo here for your video so i just have my face up here and um i like that better than my logo on this channel some people get their their logo but i think a person's face here is good because it's way more personal and you kind of see who you're going to be listening to uh, before you go through and plus when you're commenting in other people's comments you don't want some random like logo that's commenting on everybody's stuff. Like you want your face when you're talking to people in the comments, like they can see you. So I like the face here, but here's where you do a logo. And there's a debate if you should put your logo there or if you should put a subscribe button there because this will link to a subscribe button. But I don't think most people know to click on your logo to get to subscribe. I mean, there's a subscribe button down here also. Um, but if they point at your logo or click on it, it gets to a subscribe button. And so a lot of uh, YouTube optimizing people are suggesting, like, forget putting your logo there. Who cares? But put a button uh, that looks like a subscribe button there so people will click on it. That's like popping a subscribe button onto the screen, right? Um, and then other people are like, no, you need to use this spot for your branding, you know, and people will click on it. Um, so basically what I did was listen to both of them and just combine the ideas. Uh, and this is something that has really kicked up my subscriber count. Like I just started getting this up like the last two or three days and my subscribers have gone from just getting like two subscribers a day to getting 20 a day immediately as soon as I did this. Um, and it should even be more now because I've done it even better uh, as of today. And what you do is you do get your branding in here. So I got I have my my bear logo. It's like a it's like an angry bear chess piece, and it's kind of squished a little bit because it has to be a square here. Um, but it's like you know it's an investment channel that talks about how to invest in difficult markets. So I've got the bear there. Um, which is like the bear market is difficult market and it's a chess piece because a lot of investment companies like to have a chess piece as a logo. It's like a strategical thing that a lot of investment companies use for a logo. Um, so I had a chess piece bear, which nobody freaking has. I looked all over and like nobody's ever made a chess piece bear. So I'm like, okay, well, that's pretty cool and simple. 
And I made it kind of crazy. He's like a freaking growling bear with his claws out. So it's kind of fun. I was going for that kind of with the branding idea. But with this specific logo, it's not like this is my icon that I use. But what you do here is you make your icon look like a YouTube subscribe button. So it has a little YouTube subscribe arrow and it says subscribe. And now it's your branding logo that people will recognize, but it says subscribe. It looks like the YouTube button. I started just even leaving the YouTube arrow on my normal logo in general because it's just a it's just the logo for this channel. And um, and now I've come back in today and I've added click to subscribe um, because most people don't even realize you can click on this thing and they don't know that it leads to a subscribe button. And so. You get all of the elements here at the same time. You get your branding. You get the call to action, like click this thing. You get subscribe here. They know what it does. And then you can put a start time here, which I like to put between maybe like 10 seconds and two minutes, kind of like once they're in the video and interested, uh, whenever you think that would be in your video, you want it to like pop up onto the screen like while they're interested. And then it's like, boom, subscribe. Like you don't want it to pop up right at the beginning before they even start watching. And you don't want it like, you know, five or 10 minutes after a bunch of people leave the channel. Um, but like whatever point you think is like where things would get interesting in your video, maybe 45 seconds or something like boom, pop this thing up on the screen and it says click to subscribe. It's your logo kind of fun or cool or really professional, whatever your logo style is. And this thing gets subscriptions better than anything else that you can do uh, in my experience. And that's the whole subscribe logo trick in this branding element. And uh, and of course, like you can do other things to get people to subscribe. You can tell people like, hey, subscribe to my video, you know, when you're talking to them. Um, and that works. Like people will subscribe if you chat and talk to them, but you can't, like it's not good to go every single video and be like, hey, subscribe and stuff like that because uh, the most effective thing for the YouTube algorithm is to ask people to hit the like button. So like when you're chatting in the video, you want to find creative and fun kind of ways to tell people to hit the like button. And the way that I usually do it in my videos, as I say, um, whatever I'm talking about, like uh, I'm talking about Jeff Snyder or something. I'm like, Jeff Snyder, you know, always says that the, Federal Reserve doesn't control the interest rates or something. And then I'm like, and Jeff Snyder always smashes the like button right now to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. And that's kind of a way to phrase it that, um, well, it makes it fun because you're kind of transitioning into it and you're like smash the button and you can even like wave and point at it and stuff. And then, um, just some different ideas to kind of get people to hit the like button and not get annoyed with you for asking. Um, because if you just keep asking them to hit the like button, a lot of people might get put off, but if you kind of make it fun and then you, you say like, please, you know, to help me out. And they're like, okay, like you kind of have to say this for the channel. And then you explain like, you know, for the YouTube algorithm, it's like the reason that they should hit it and why you're asking. And then it's like, okay. And then they just kind of get used to you saying it and they'll remember to do it. Like people that are actually subscribers to the channel will be like, oh yeah. And they'll hit it kind of like just watching the channel kind of like as a thank you. And um, new people that come to the channel, like it's explaining to them and telling them to do it, you know? Um, and not all the channels are doing this, but it's really effective at getting people to hit the like button. And this little guy, that's how you get people to subscribe. And that's really important. And then once they are subscribed, they'll get all of your random videos. And, uh, you know, and then you want to get them over to your playlists where you can get all the watch hours because the watch hours are the hard thing to get. So I'm going to save this because I did some things, I think. Um, yes, yeah, so that is some cool stuff uh, to recap. What's important? Getting the comments and responding to everybody is important and understanding, you know, when to hit the like button and the, and the heart button and pin those good comments up to the top and get people chatting. Um, and then for getting traffic in, go to big channels that are related 
and you know, subscribe, hit the bell, be the first one to comment, get really good comments on their channels, get conversation going on their channels, mention your channel, get traffic off of the good channels to your channel. And then you want that, you want those cards to the playlists, you want the playlists on your splash screen, and you want to get people to your playlists because the playlist is where you get the watch hours. And then the keyword videos really, really zoom in and target those keywords and keep your video on topic on those keywords make it interesting and then you can get that ending screen that takes people to your playlists and you can transition people to related videos i like to do both um because the the youtube algorithm picking which video this person probably will like is really good like they'll get to another video they like and that increases subscriptions or if they get to your playlist uh, they might watch the whole thing and give you watch hours so that's kind of how to structure the channel and target uh, keyword videos or playlist videos. There's like two different types of things to, to focus on. And the playlist videos are the ones that are going to be there forever. Like you got to get really good playlists and good content up. That's what YouTube's going to be focusing on for the next, whatever, 10 or 20 years is good playlist videos that people want to watch the whole series, you know, um, and it can be on whatever whatever topic, it can be completely any topic for your playlist, but it's just stuff that that's going to matter, you know, next you know next year and ten years, something people might look for, might find, and like a how-to video is a really cool one because you could have a lot of related how-to videos in a playlist that people would actually watch, and also that's a big search word people look for, like how to do this or that. So probably the easiest thing to do for a new YouTube channel is whatever you know how to do especially if it's some kind of niche thing that people don't know how to do and it's, you could teach like how to playlist for a new channel is great because that's stuff people will search for and they'll hit your channel i mean if you know how to uh i don't know like ride dolphins or something um and you start a channel on how to you know make friends with dolphins and get them to do tricks and <laughs> something i don't know i'm just making stuff up but um like anyone that's searching for that is gonna find your channel and they're gonna find your playlist and if they're into that specific weird thing that you know about like they'll watch your whole thing and they'll subscribe and you'll get a ton of watch hours and you can have a really tiny niche channel that gets really loyal subscribers that watch your whole playlists um or you could like this channel is investing which is a huge topic it's just talking about money like that's a that's a huge thing so it's kind of hard to zoom in on things but i've like focused you know you can focus in on like austrian economics on one playlist and it's education on a lot of stuff that people don't know about and like if they get into that into that playlist they'll watch the whole thing um so that's the idea of playlists and now how to get traffic from outside of youtube and this is a really cool thing. I mean, I did a ton of research over the last like year and a half on driving traffic to like, you know, like a Shopify store or e-commerce kind of thing. And so really the top two or three ways to drive traffic to e-commerce sites is Facebook ads, Instagram influencers, and then maybe Google ads. Um, and you have to get really, really tricky and specific with targeting. You have to be able to target your uh, specific, you know, genre and niche on your on your keywords in Facebook. And you can really, really narrow down exactly who you're targeting and you sell a product that exactly matches them. Uh, and it's a similar kind of strategy for YouTube. Like you want that specific kind of playlist. That's a specific niche. And then when you can go, so, I mean, if you want to do, that's basically not going to be cost effective to do like Facebook ads or in, Instagram influencers. Like you have to pay a lot of money to run Facebook ads and you better be making money. Like if you're doing a Shopify store or something like it's expensive and if it doesn't work, your store is going to go out of business. Um, so it's, it's really uh, difficult. And for a YouTube channel, um, the average time to get a YouTube channel monetized is, I think it's 22 months. It's like, yeah, almost two years is the average amount of time to get a YouTube channel monetized. But you can do it in 
you know, a couple months or less than a month if you have like really good techniques and you can get content up quick. Um, and yeah, there's people that say like, oh, how to get your channel monetized in like a week or something like maybe if you're like really good at all of this stuff and you just knock it all out like really quick. Like you could, I mean, you could get a channel, you can get a playlist of 20 videos up in a week if you know exactly what you're doing and you can go do all of these, you know, techniques in another week or something and you could potentially get uh, near your monetization limits pretty fast. I mean, I don't know. People say like a week or something. That's nonsense. But, um, but yeah, I was talking about how to get outside traffic and... So most of the ways to get outside traffic cost money and you can target people really specifically with Facebook ads or you can go on Instagram and find kind of a micro Instagram influencers and you can pay them to post your channel or something up on their thing. But that costs money and that that's what really worked well for e-commerce over the last five years. But now it's so competitive and so expensive. Um, it's even hard to make money in e-commerce doing that. And I mean, for a new Facebook you know, like a new YouTube channel, like you don't want to be spending all, a bunch of money trying to get people over to your channel, especially if you don't even have all the branding and everything set up very well. Like um, you need your playlists in place. Like that's your product on YouTube is your playlists. Like you might want to get more than one playlist and make sure the people coming over actually like it before you go trying to spend money on advertising. Um, but you can advertise, right, with Facebook ads uh, and the Instagram influencers are, are big ones that are expensive and drive a ton of traffic. Um, or you can do Google ads, which are okay, and you can target pretty well with those too. But you have to get really specific with your targeting um, because it costs money for each person that clicks on that thing or uh, for, for impressions or whatever the the payment is on the ads. and if you're not getting good traffic from that ad, it's going to be really expensive and it's not going to help your channel that much. Um, so those are kind of the, the ways to get a lot of traffic that are expensive that I don't really like. Um, just because it, it, it takes a while to get monetized. And if that rushed you to get monetized faster, like, okay, but I don't know if it really pays off that well. Because uh, still, even after you reach your monetization limits, you have to apply, and then it takes like two more months to get monetized. Um, but uh, one way that you can do paid ads that is probably better than those options is actually do YouTube ads, uh, because those are people that are actually watching YouTube. That's what you want, YouTube viewers. And you can go to your related channels that you should be commenting on and trying to get you know, normal traffic off the comments, but you can get ads in on those channels and get ads from related channels where you know people are watching YouTube and they're interested in that type of content. And if you want to pay for ads, I think that's the way to do it is just YouTube ads. And um, that's paying, but there's a better way um, that's similar to the YouTube comment technique. And that would be this is the big secret for outside traffic, I think, is Facebook groups are really, really good um, because you can go and do the same kind of traffic technique that you do on the related videos where you comment and mention your channel, but you can go to a Facebook group and you can join all the related Facebook groups. So, I mean, for me, like an investing group would be really generic. Or I could go to like libertarian or Austrian economics kind of groups that are interested in that type of monetary education or something like that. Um, and you get, and that's what I'm going to be working on this week is trying to get more outside traffic. But, um, but you can go into those groups, get interested, get, join all the groups, chat with a bunch of people, like become part of the group. And then you can start, um, you know, telling people about your channel. And you can even talk to the group owners and ask if they need like some kind of video. You can make a specific video for them and ask them and they'll let you like post it. Sometimes they'll put it like at the top of the group or something uh, as like a group post. 
and you're like creating a thing for that group, but it's a YouTube video that everyone's going to come to your channel and watch. And that's just like a really, really cool way um, to get people over. And you could maybe pay people to post links or something like that. Um, but it depends on it depends on the groups or even like in Reddit or something. Like if you're in Reddit, you could find Reddit threads that are related and you can talk about your channel and try to get people over. So I think that is the the best organic way to get people that are interested is join um, join YouTube channels that are related to yours is probably the best. And then Facebook groups, some of those groups are just huge, like you know, half a million people or something. And if you can get 1% of that number of people to come look at your channel, especially if it's a related topic, I mean, that's massive. Um, yeah, and then like Reddit threads or whatever, and then just represent yourself in just general branding. Like you get your brand and your name and you just represent your brand like all the time when you're talking online. Like you're you know, your name on all these different sites is your company name. And that's who you are when you're talking to everyone and they'll find you like, go make a website that matches your YouTube channel name and link to your YouTube channel from the website. And then, you know, I want you to get all the YouTube channel uh, traffic and stuff like that. Then you can start branching out into other business ideas that are related and you kind of have YouTube as a monetized thing, but it's also a platform for you to talk about um, like for me, I'm making a, I'm making like a little online shop to sell some t-shirts right now. And so I can make shirts that are related to this whole channel and this topic. And I can put links and talk about it in my videos and you can just sell shirts, you know, from your video or whatever you want, like some gear, some mugs or something like just kind of swag. Um, you can sell that kind of stuff or you can from your channel that's already popular, you can talk about a completely different channel on a completely different topic, but they know it's you and they like to watch you and you can start a new channel and get it popular pretty fast. Um, so yeah, like getting a YouTube channel going is really useful for more than just that channel and just getting monetized. Like once your channel is popular, then you can get all your affiliate links and you can you know, you can start like little side businesses and use YouTube to launch that stuff or or get new YouTube, YouTube channels started. Um, so that's how to build a channel kind of the the real way following the the YouTube guidelines that they recommend without spamming and without doing a bunch of crazy stuff. And uh yeah, and the good, good moves is that that branding subscribe button. Make it look like a logo and a subscribe button and tell them to click on it. It says click to subscribe. Looks like a logo. Looks like a subscribe thing. That's a killer trick. Get over to the other channels and get good comments that get people to come over. And then get out on the social networking platforms, Facebook groups, find groups on different, you know, websites. I mean, that's not the only social networking groups. I mean, check out Instagram and Twitter and uh, just get on all the social networks and represent your brand and talk about your channel and, you know, get, get conversations going on all of those platforms and you'll get traffic from all of that stuff. And that's a lot of work, but um, that's the way to do it. And it doesn't cost money. You just, just keep at it. And if you post, you know, one video a week and you go on some groups and some other videos like once or twice a week, it could take months or a year to get your channel kind of going. Or if you have, like I do right now, on lockdown in South Africa, like I just have time to do this and pretty bored. So... Uh, I've just been working on this channel and researching all this stuff like crazy. And uh, I have some good strategies here. And this is a really long video, but I'll go back and hit like specific topics on things like this. And we'll get into other business ideas, uh, print on demand, e-commerce. Uh, I'm a software engineer. Like that's definitely an online job that I 
probably wouldn't recommend to most people, but there's a lot of kind of online jobs that are available and using Fiverr and stuff like that to get work. And, um, you know, you can kind of start a business without really starting a business. You just get people to do little things for you and the things that you're bad at. It's easy to find people that can do different things. Um, so there's tons of small business ideas and YouTube is a great way to get started with a lot of them. Um, it's not exactly passive. Most businesses aren't, but, uh, but this playlist should be really cool. Look at all kinds of ways to start small businesses and just get some money going on the side. And once you get enough money to live off of, you don't need to work and then you have more time to build business and then more business and you can retire early or have lots of money to invest. And that's just kind of the idea is just gradually stop working for someone else and stop getting paid for your individual hours and create basically financial assets. Like a YouTube playlist is a financial asset that you can get paid for. You create the thing and then it exists and then you can get paid for it and you can keep working on it. Um, but it'll be there and people will hit it and it, it'll get monetized. And that is, that's what this playlist is going to be all about. Basically how to build financial assets that make you money over time without requiring a bunch of work. Like you do the work once to get it built. And then after that, it's a little bit of maintenance and it continues to make you money, like writing a book or doing a YouTube channel or um, creating some print on demand mugs or t-shirts or something like that that people can order or or some kind of actual product like a piece of software if you know how to do stuff like that uh, there's a bunch of different business ideas but that's the idea is you're trying to create an asset an asset that pays you cash flow that pays you money and i mean real estate can work like this too i mean like rental real estate you can uh if you get the correct prices and everything and you get good property management like this is more complicated but that can be completely remote business too. You can own houses in Kansas and rent them out and you can have property managers and that cash flows. That's a financial asset that cash flows um, that you don't have to work on all the time. You just own the thing and it cash flows. Uh, so there's a lot of things like that and we'll get into them on this channel and please, uh, well, if the little subscribe button thing should be over here, please hit that thing. And, Smash that like button to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. This is not financial advice. And I don't know if there's much else here. I guess just if you uh, if you want to know anything else about YouTube, I mean, I've done a ton of research and I'm trying all these strategies. So I'm seeing what works now, but I'm not a YouTube expert. I mean, I'm just getting started, but I've done a ton, a ton of research. So I've covered like all the things that everyone says and I've tried on them. I'm seeing what's working now. Um, but yeah, if you, if you have like a good strategy to tell me about, please do. Or if you have questions, I'll uh, do my best to answer them. And uh, if you have, I mean, I've, I've started tons and tons of businesses. I mean, I'm a software engineer, but I've also... I mean, I've started development companies, I've taught guitar lessons, I've done, like, I've sold furniture, uh, I flip things, like, on Craigslist, I'm always doing some random stuff on the side, and um, the thing to do is, though, you got to create a product, you, got, you have to create a financial asset uh, when you're starting a business, and that is that's what we'll focus on there's a bunch of different ways to do that and you can create sort of intellectual financial assets that don't require maintenance and people can order as many of them as they want not like selling one thing on craigslist that takes a ton of work just to sell one item like you can sell unlimited items and it's scalable and that's what we're going to get into on this playlist is how to how to start businesses in general and uh hopefully Passive income businesses that don't require a ton of work that you can do from anywhere is kind of the dream for most people, I think, is just to make money without working <laughs> and be wherever you want. Um, and you can do it. You can do it. You just got to get started and uh, and just get into it. 
So let me see. Oh, let's go into the uh, let's go into the analytics here. So when you go into analytics, you can look at your traffic source types here. And then uh, there's just some really there's just some really good stats inside analytics. So you, you just I don't want to spend a ton of time on analytics. I could spend probably two hours talking about the analytics. But you can see like your top videos. Like this Nordic American tanker video just went crazy. Like that's just happened to be a topic that I have that very few people have. And it got really popular the last couple of weeks because the stocks started getting crazy. Um, so it's really cool to find, find kind of what, I mean, you just make a bunch of stuff and see what people want. And you just keep making them whatever the people want. And you can check out demographics. And see who subscribes, like less than 20% subscribe. That's mostly guys. Mostly guys my age in my country. <laughs> so um, the demographics of my viewer is very similar to myself, which is interesting. Uh, probably not that interesting, but but all these stats are in here. And yeah, here, traffic sources from YouTube search. This one is so important. So you see it's like UCO stock, DHT stock, NAT stock. So it's the stock symbol and the word stock keeps hitting Nordic American tanker without the word stock. Top ships stop, like the name of the company stock. So it's like ticker stock or company stock or company or like a person's name. Um, that's what's hitting on my channel. And this this whole chart, yeah, I'll go look at some more stuff. May as well, we're in here. Um, yeah, TVIX, Euronav, just company names. And then like a person's name, like Stanley Druckenmiller, like that's a specific economist that not very many people talk about. Uh, I do a cool video on uh, on Druckenmiller and and you'll get hits because there's not that much competition. Whereas like Warren Buffett or like Marin Katusa, like not that many people talk about Marin Katusa. And he's really good with like uh, international mining companies and commodities and stuff like that. So you can talk all about Marin and uh brent johnson he talks about like the dollar milkshake theory like he's a specific economist but notice that like warren buffett or like donald trump aren't popping up in my hits really it's all these very specific things that other companies jeff snyder's here peter brent rickards so it's like specific economists that are less popular or less well known that someone's trying to look up and figure some stuff out like they heard the name somewhere they don't know about them they try to look it up your channel has that info like that's how you hit keywords. It's not just splashing stuff that everyone else has covered because you'll just get lost in the mess. But like these Nordic American tankers, I have a bunch of oil tanker videos, but uh, but this specific tanker company is just nobody covers that company. And I have like really in-depth charts on this company and um, it just kind of blew up early before I even had any branding or anything on my channel. I think I, I think I made like a hundred random videos just to see what hit and like that one hit. So I'm like, ah, oh, okay. And then you start seeing what's working. Um, so the analytics are really important and the traffic sources are vitally important. And I don't know the demographics. Most likely you're going to find people that speak your language and your accent, I would guess. The age doesn't really matter that much, but this stuff helps you tailor your content and see who's subscribing. And then and then you can kind of think like it's kind of two groups. Like your subscribers is one group. Like you want to make content that your subscribers will like. And then you also want to make content that will just hit random searches and get more people to the channel. Um, so that's sort of like the playlist versus the keyword videos thing. And yeah, my subscriber count was really, really low until I got that logo up there and it just started jumping up like my, um, let's go to the monetization panel and see where we are. So 
Okay, so over the past entire month, I got 200 subscribers, and the last two days after I got that logo in here, I got 60. So, I mean, it just like exponentially jumped as soon as I got that subscribe logo into the little branding element. And my watch hours have been, I mean, almost a thousand watch hours in, in my first month is pretty good. Like I got one playlist that's relatively popular. Uh, and I have like seven other playlists I tried and nobody cares. So, um, so right now I'm trying to build another playlist that people might be interested in. And that's what, that's really the target on YouTube is making playlists. Cause that's really your asset. Like these keyword videos get some traffic, but they're not too valuable later. So you really want to build these playlists and build whole you know, whole chunks of content that everybody's going to want to watch. And then the keyword videos is more like a tactic, kind of like commenting on videos is a tactic to get people here. And yeah, those videos might be useful later, but I mean, three years from now, some video about, about how Nordic tankers was doing in 2020, probably not as interesting. Um, but, you know, talking about Jeff Snyder and, um, how the euro dollar system functions and how it just changed like that's still going to be that's still going to be uh an educational topic that will matter 20 years from now like that's a that's a asset basically more than more than this as far as a business goes and you should look at youtube like a business i mean you need to brand it you need to get like your your values and your mission kind of thing and get people to understand like what you're trying to do and why it matters and you know you need your you need your brand to be recognizable and unique and you need to position yourself in sort of a niche where you're you're like the product and the expert in that specific niche and not just like a mess of all different stuff like really focused on on what you're doing just the general branding things uh, i could go into into business a little bit more um, I mean, I started several businesses and I've, I've done branding and design for tons of companies and I've been a product manager, actually. Um, so I do have a ton of information on branding and marketing, just general business kind of things uh, that I could go into. And software engineering stuff, I have a ton of that. Uh, if any of that stuff is interesting, just ask me and I can I'll make videos, whatever you ask for. Uh, whatever you want, certain stocks or certain business ideas or certain monetary macro education. I've been studying macro for like 10 years. It's one of my favorite topics to talk about. Uh, so like if you come up with a macro topic that I don't know about enough to answer, like I'll research the thing until I can't answer you and I'll still make a video. So um, yeah, just uh, welcome, welcome to the whatever this playlist is. And I don't have any kind of catchphrase for this, but uh, thanks for thanks for watching and uh, cheers.